All right, all right. I'm here with Ben Ross from Green Payments this morning. Nice to uh, see you. Same here. How's Same everything here. going? Happy Good. New Year. Good, no doubt. Same to you. So, listen, I want to get right into the mix of uh, grip because every time I talk to you, I, I learn more about you. So, uh, you know, we met through, you know, mutual, uh, a client. We met through a client that, that needed help with his uh uh, commerce, e-commerce on his website. Uh, your team was working with him. They met him through a networking group, and there was some just coordination to make sure, sure. that the uh, authorized.net was processing payments correctly in the same way, shape, and form that, that you guys explained to him, and that's how you and I met. And then, you know, we have met each other through uh, some net, you know, we saw each other through some networking events. You came to our grand opening in Belmont. Thank yep. you for coming to that. For sure. Congrats. And, um, you, you, you got a great business, so I want to Thank just you. jump right into it and uh, get started today. So tell us a little bit about how you, how, where, where you've been and where, where you're going. For sure. Appreciate that, Tom, and, and congrats on the, the new office and everything here. So uh, Green Payments, we're a payments company. We do credit card processing and point of sale. Uh, we work with agents all over the country, and we have partners all, all over the country that we support and help grow a portfolio of, of merchant accounts. Um, for me personally, I started out in the restaurant business mm -hmm. um, and then grew that restaurant group. We ended up selling a private equity, eventually went public. Um, but in that process, we had acquired our point of sale dealers. So I really learned a lot about the technology technology side of the payments business. Um, but at that time, we really didn't focus much at all on credit card processing. Uh, and so from that, uh, Cliff, who's my partner in Green Payments, we've been <clears throat> friends since we're eight years old. Wow, and that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go back a long time, very close, always would keep in touch over the years as we were doing different things. Uh, would talk business, talk strategy, talk life. Um, and we're always stayed very close. And then, you know, as I was exiting the restaurant group, he wanted to, to kind of grow to the next level. And so we came together and so he green had payments. green payments before you got he, involved. He was in the credit card business. Correct. So he was more primarily on credit card processing and, and you know, uh, that side versus mm -hmm. kind of the full integrated payments and, and point of sale and everything else that we do now. Credit card processing has together. evolved though. Like it used to be like, you know, the, the little machine, they swiped it. You got that old, that carbon oh, yeah. receipt. Yep. But like over the years, I mean, again, now restaurants, especially restaurants, like they have the point of sale system yep. and they have, you know, the payments going out. Like it's not just that like little swipe anymore. Now it's also tied into their, you know, whole operation 100% and it's fascinating because even those standalone <clears throat> terminals now do so much more than they used to I mean you yeah. can send payment links you can send invoices you can text through the devices that yeah. are right on your countertop um, but to your point the the integrated full solution is what people need and want and that's where you know most of kind of the traditional credit card processing companies just don't try to you know they're used to hey you need a credit card terminal great we'll send it out to you yeah. maybe you negotiate the rate and ship a terminal the challenge is what businesses need is very different than that and that's where we really come in and even for our agents and our partners they can't be experts on every different type of industry whether you're a car dealership a pharmacy a dental practice a business like yours a marketing for you know or your transportation business every one of them has different needs and that's where we're able to come in and figure out that right yeah, solution it's almost like a, a consultative um approach than you know the old school credit card guys <laughs> like the rate's 2.72 <laughs> you know Correct. take it or leave it like Correct. i feel like i feel like the, the old school guys in the credit card processing is a different world than what is needed today and i think even like in my world you know again i need you often i need your team often because you know, people are doing a lot of commerce on their website now. Correct. And, you know, where in the old days, like, it was like, ah, I don't really need e-commerce. But now even, like, we have a pay, a pay my bill link on the website just to make it easy. And not everybody likes giving out their credit card number. I no. feel like my credit card number is everywhere. Like, <laughs> I feel like every vendor has mine. Correct. But on the others, and that's why every six months I need to get a new card. Because yeah. there's some sort of Something fraudulent happens. activity on yeah. somebody not protecting the credit card in a vault-like system. But, yeah. you know, on the other side, is like, even yesterday someone wanted to pay me. Um, I don't know them well. They were making a deposit on a project we're doing. And they said, can you just send me the link? And very easily I sent them, you know, go to wingmanplanning.pay now. And... Um, you know they can, uh, you know they can just go on, put in the amount, and they're yeah. on their way. And it's easy, and they could do it at ten o'clock at night. They could do it at seven in the morning, where you don't need to be in the office to oh call at nine o'clock. Because those days are over. Like no. Amazon yeah. and and the web has changed those days. But again, I think that it, these business owners, 
you know, every business owner has to be thinking yeah. like that. Just having that little link on their site is just so easy and convenient for their customer versus just, um, nah, call tomorrow, or send a check. I, I, I dread when people say to me, I'm going to send a check. It's like, oh, just one more thing we have to it's keep true. track of. It's like one more thing. Do we, did we get the check? Do we, then someone's got to go to the bank. Like, those days are just over. Yeah, no, it's very true. One thing, like for us, we have a large dental group that we brought on last year, and the biggest reason they came on board with us was because you know they're they're a DSO, so a dental service organization. They've got you know a uh, hundred plus <clears throat> dental practices oh, wow. across the country, all different owners in each one, or different providers that kind of manage them, and they run a little bit different each one, right? Because they have their way of doing things. Um, and so the, the challenge that they faced was they each had, you know, different types of payment devices, different ways of collecting payment, different types of statements, different types of backend reporting. So the accounting team had all different yeah. things they had to learn. It was super cumbersome. So part of what we did is we got them all onto one platform, one setup, but we also, to your point, gave them the ability now to send, to collect payment by QR in, in the practice, but, and also send text links, email links that they weren't doing prior and their collection uh, speed sped up you know it, couldn't it helped them agree. a ton I couldn't agree with that more like I just think about even when people send me a link like yeah. people send me the link it's done Correct. versus Correct. I, you know you gotta write the check yep. you gotta go back yep. to your office write right. the check or you know oh I, I call my office at 2 o'clock like well 2 o'clock's not convenient for me like <laughs> well you know, you're and then whoever you're calling ends up get, getting tied up and then they're, they're busy and now you're chasing them down and everyone I, feels awkward yeah. about it and it's no one not trying to pay it's just the speed of the way the world is now well, there's some guys that are trying well, to that's, it, but that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. But I mean, overall, I would agree with you. And yeah. I, I love, I love when people send me the link because yeah. it's just, it's done. Yep. You know, yep. you take the card out, and you're, in three yep. seconds, it's done and it's paid. Yep. And, and it's also more secure. Like I, I rather, not again. Everyone has my card from all my vendors, but I'd rather just do the link because yep. it's just like, you know. You're the only one that has yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's the truth. And you can store it too. Like, so any system we provide, that card can get stored there automatically, yeah. right? So then if they need to go charge you again, but they only you have just the last say, yes, four, correct. they don't have the full card. It's correct. that much more correct. safe in that regard. And, correct. you know, um, so your partner from when you were eight years old. Yeah. So, like, that's just wild that, you're, that you've that you retained a friendship that long and that you guys uh, it, took, took it on and. That's it's been cool. I mean, we started out even straight out of high school. We had a small business together, and then we kind of went our separate ways, did, did different stuff. Um, and then when we came back together, the, to me, the thing that's been the coolest part about it is it wasn't an overnight process, yes. right? Um, I mean, we spent probably about a year just planning, discussing, lay, putting together pro formas. What do we think we're going to do? How's it going to yep. look? What's it going to be like? And he knew the business inside and out. I understood scaling a business and growth and what that was going to take to some extent. Didn't really know credit card processing per they understood the point of sales side, the technology, understood it conceptually. Um, but he understood, fortunately, the business very well. And, and it's been an amazing thing because every kind of plan that we laid out, everything we said, hey, let's adjust here. Let's do this instead. Let's do that. As we laid it out and made those adjustments, we then executed it. And, um, and it's been a really cool process because just all those conversations are just natural and casual and yep. it's very different. I mean, look, when I was with the restaurant group, there was a lot of different people, different players, different backgrounds. They didn't necessarily see eye to eye. They didn't have the same goals, the same vision. end objective, right? The same vision. And that to me, you know, we'd work hard, we'd be on the road, we'd be traveling, we'd be pushing and, and, and doing everything we could to build the business. But the challenge was in the end, everyone's pushing and everyone's working hard, but the challenge is what they were looking to, to end up with and what the end result was that we were working towards. Each person had their own. And so um, the challenge became, you know, you become kind of disjointed over time and now everyone's putting this effort in, everyone's working hard and, and, and you lose that. Whereas for us, we see eye to eye. I mean, literally since we're eight years old, we've yeah. had the same goals, the same desires. Where do we want to live? What do we want our lifestyles to be like? What do we want our personal lives to be, our business lives? You know, when do we want to work? How do we want to work, right? Which is always an important thing in any partnership, right? Everyone's got their own style and approach. And um, we've understood each other because we know each other so well. So those things that a lot of times can be a hurdle in any business partnership or even just a working dynamic, an employee with an employer or vice versa, 
it, it can be challenging because, you know, look, some people like to work from home. Some people like to work in the office. Some people want hybrid. So, you know, everyone's got their own thing they want. What's your preference on them. the work style? Do you like to work from home or are you uh, in that per own office? Me personally and the way we have the company, it's we're, we're in the office. Um, I, to us, and especially because, look, we've, we've been building the company the last several years, <laughs> but we're, we're in growth mode, right? We're constantly growing and, and continuing to, to kind of refine what we do and it's growing the team as well, right? So when you're doing that, my opinion is, um, you know, it's one thing if you've got a, at a level of scale, you got a thousand employees or, or 5,000 or whatever, um, and each person kind of has their very focused role and they're just kind of, they've got this box they're in and, and they execute that piece day in, day out, and you can lay it out, A, B, C, D, and give them kind of the, the rules of the road and, and then they, they drive it. That can, I believe, be done pretty well remote and, and, and um, you know, work from home. Whereas when you're in growth mode and you're scaling and you're, you need to be creative, you need to adjust, you're build, bringing on new partners, which we're doing constantly, right? That environment, you need to be able to be more collaborative, which I think is very challenging when you're working from home. Um, just because, you know, look, because you're working from home, sure, you may start at six and then you stop at eight or nine and take an hour or two to take care of some things and then start back up at 11 and then you, you work till four and then you stop and then you start back up at seven, work a couple hours. That can be great. For, for that, you know, if that works. But if you're trying to be kind of in real time working through stuff. I couldn't agree with you tough. more. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, I think I think there's some jobs. I, I was saying this to someone the other day. Like, you're an accountant. Like, right. You could work from home. 100%. Like, like the, the, the laws of math haven't changed. 100%. The, you know, a bookkeeper. Great Correct. job from home. Correct. But, like, in my world, like, when you're running, you know, a marketing agency, I think the – you said a collaboration. Yeah. And just – there are times where you just – you get better design if you're um, if you work together. If you Correct. if you get somebody's point of view, hey Ben, what do you think of this? Like while you while you're walking down the hallway, while you're going to get a drink of water, you know, give me your thoughts on this because I think that there's a value to that. Or getting on and looking at a whiteboard and saying, what can we do differently? You get a very uh, a way more fresh perspective. Yeah. When when it's off the cuff and it's casual, you get a, a more genuine, I believe, a more genuine perspective. Versus, look, we're going to get on and spend an hour. Let's you know, uh, we're going to review Zoom. this deck. Yeah. Or we're going to review this document or, or we're going to review this product or this yeah. website in your world, right? We're going to go through it. Okay, each person gives their three points and, oh, I did my part for this call. Yep. Ver, you know, instead of, hey, come over here, check this out. I just did this. Do you want to look at it? What, what do you think? Did I do this the right way? Should we tweak it? Should we change it? What should we do? That, to me, you're going to get a way more in-depth, genuine answer than, hey, let's jump on this call. We're going to spend an hour. Each person's going to give their totally. points. I, I and, couldn't agree yeah. with you more on that. And I think that you know, as 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 the world continues to evolve, like I think that that's going to be there's still a spot for. It. I know for everybody, sure. you know, I think that there's a number of people that like to work from home. And again, who doesn't like to not have to commute, not have to, you know, there's some differences. But on the other side is, and I think it, I think it, you said it, it, growth mode. Like yep. when you're in growth mode, like I think it's beneficial to be there. If you like, and like I said, if it's your bookkeeper and accountant, work from home. Do it. Do it. Agreed. And I mean, look, we did a, had a lot of our early growth during COVID, right? So of course, at that time, <laughs> yeah, people, yeah. you know, mainly were working from home, right? And as we came out of that and started bringing people on, what I found was a lot of people that great, super talented, smart people were in these roles where they were stuck working from home, didn't want to be because quite frankly, they're especially being here by the Jersey Shore, you know, everyone's lifestyles are different. But when you're by the Jersey Shore, let's call it what it is, cost of living, you, know, you tend to live in, in, in tighter spaces, you're right on the beach, whatever, you may not have this expansive, you know, huge place to just, hey, let me just throw up an office today yeah. for, for eternity, yeah. right? So, so now you're kind of, you're in this different environment, it's not what you're used to, you're not getting the same social, you know, interaction that you were used to and so we found it was a huge advantage having people come into yep. an office where everyone got along everyone can collaborate and have fun and talk and get to know each other and and it became truly I believe an advantage for us you know when we're kind of competing you know to some extent for you know the, the people that we're bringing on board to the team so um, yeah without question to me th there is an advantage to having that environment now if you're in an area where you know what the talent pool you know that you need is two hours away and it's yeah. not conducive, then you've got to make adjustments and um, and I think you can make it work. But uh, but I believe strongly in having that environment where everyone's able to come together. And, and your office together. is beautiful. You Thank invited you. us uh, down a few months ago and we uh, saw it. And I think I think you're going to outgrow it too. Thank you. Yeah. I think you're Don't tell me yet. We're, I, yeah. I I hate to tell you like <laughs> uh, just from speaking from experience. <laughs> 
I think you're going to outgrow yeah. that outfit. Um, I, I hope we do, and um, but I hope we can make it work yeah. as well, right? Yep. So, it, we'll, it's, uh, it's a good, we'll it's a good problem. <laughs> That's fair. You know, do it like Wingman. We, we got the second office, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. It also uh, you know, it gives you an opportunity to – Switch, switch places to work for a couple That's days. That's it. Well, yeah, we'll do the opposite, I guess, of you. We'll have to get one down by, like, Manasquan or Tom's yeah. River or whatever, so that everyone from Brick and that kind of you have Ocean County, from, from yeah, the, that or Bayville, yeah. you know, some of that Ocean County area, well, instead of them having to drive up, yep. they'll, they'll work there, and then we'll have the Monmouth County yep. crew, you know, anyone yep. coming uh, from, from Jersey City, you know, that area. That's, but that's cool. County and you know what? There. When you have that second building, it – one month place that people can see you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. You get the exposure of that. I mean, we've yeah. had a number of walk-ins in Belmar, you know, since being here, and it's just it's, yeah. it's a nice feeling yeah. because they see you, and you know, it just brings in new leads. It's true. I will say. So our original office was it was in Asbury Park. We were above Pascal and Sabine in that mm -hmm. building, uh, <laughs> smaller space. We then expanded to, in Long Branch uh, to a beautiful. I mean, it was a beautiful building, but it was uh, down kind of a, a dead end road or whatnot in in downtown Long Branch, but didn't have visibility really from a retail kind of consumer perspective mm -hmm. and our office now as you know is right across the street from the train in little silver i mean i had a, a friend of my, co my college roommate actually who just a few weeks ago over the holidays uh, uh sent me a text and it was a picture of our sign through the window of a train and, That's awesome. and it was amazing he's like oh is that you you know <laughs> and i'm like yeah Damn it, straight. it was and so it's amazing i didn't realize like in our mind when we bought the building and and and, and did it of course we said hey this will be cool It'd be nice to get the visibility but for us it was really just the space work the yeah. layout the the size of it um hopefully works for us and hopefully will work for us for the long term um but it at least worked for us uh, for where we are now yeah. and um and so we we did it i didn't realize though how much of an impact that retail exposure and and just kind of street frontage would get us people come to visit they get off the train because they're coming from the from new mm -hmm. york or whatnot and they walk off the train, and boom, the office is right there. It just has a cool feel, and that's been the feedback we've gotten. So I definitely agree. So I guess the next one we'll have to make sure we also yeah. have. Uh, I think the retail, retail play, plays into it because people, especially for our B2B services, like, Correct. you know, the fact that, like, you're not just sitting in your house. Like, yeah. I think that there's a lot of people in my space, and I think in your space too, that, it, that love working from home because it's they don't have a rent or they don't have an right. office expense. But on the other side, I think you got to weigh that out because so I much. think that I love when I love to say to people, come on in. Yeah. Let's put it on the big screen. Yep. Let's look yep. at it together. Let's come in our conference room in Manasquan and, you know, let's figure it out. Like, because I think a lot of times small business owners, especially, they don't have the support of a larger organization. Yep. They're trying to figure it out themselves. It doesn't make sense to them. They're running their business. They're preoccupied with 30 other things and then like something doesn't work on yep. their web or on their payment side and they're like just that it's frustrating right, right. So, and when they don't have that person in person to say hey let's talk through this let's strategize how can we come up with a better idea and no different than what we were saying before with employees working from home now they feel like you're just you're not really in their business you're not really with them yeah. working collaboratively you're just doing this project and then you're done yeah. right whereas to your point when you're able to be face to face even our agent partners we will fly them out have them come meet in the office have dinner yep. and you're right I mean a lot of other companies like us won't <laughs> you know they, they just kind of I don't want to say high in an office but but they're in the office they do their thing and then they leave nine to five yeah. kind of banker environment uh, to me uh, you know look I, I sat on the business council in asbury park when we were there for years we're involved with the the long branch chamber we're involved with a lot of different um you know community groups and whatnot to me that's what drives just humanity more than anything and from that you, you do get business right but really it just drives your your relationships i mean the, the jersey shore chefs association i've been involved with them for many years from when i was in a the high school culinary program at, at freehold and and I, i'm not a chef i don't claim to be i never was uh, professionally uh, but i've always loved food and and you know when i was in the restaurant business i mean it was good synergistic mm -hmm. uh, kind of relationships there uh that were developed and and to this day have have been there so i still stay involved when uh, Pre-COVID, they had an event we would run for the food bank to raise money and a couple other organizations. Um, and I chaired the event because I'm the guy that, like, you know, chefs don't tend to want to always be out front, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I like that. I don't mind it. So I'd be in front and helping, you know, get donations and sponsorships and all that. Um, and that just naturally brings business. But I think more importantly, it brings purpose outside of your day-to-day -day business. Totally. And having that retail frontage and, and, and space 
also naturally mm -hmm. does that because to your point, it, it makes you more that you're, you're a true piece of the community versus just someone that works and lives yeah. in the area. I, yeah. I love it. I mean, we're involved with the Brick Chamber. We're involved with Jersey Shore Chamber where, um, you know, we, we do our own nonprofit fundraising events, as you've seen. But yeah. like and I think that's part of it. I've always said, you, you know, it's more than just working in the area. You got to you got to become a fabric of the community. And again, I think in Manaswan and the Brick area and Point Pleasant, you know, we've done a lot of work. And I hope that, you know, we bring the same efforts to uh, Belmar and yeah. Bradley and Avon and, you know, uh, Lake Como yeah. uh, when we're in this location because I think there's a lot that we can do. You know, this year we collected over 10,000 toys right. for the for our toy drive, and I want to be able to expand that into these areas too. And I think that, you know, it's a good good synergy with yeah. uh, a retail location like this. Love that, love that. So we got to ahead of ourselves. We, we, got, <laughs> Sorry. we got to what you're doing <laughs> now. So <laughs> let's, let's, let's just, you know, let's back it up and let yeah. people know. Like, so it looks like you have everything under control and you've scaled uh, <laughs> the credit card processing business. But again, you learned the ropes through um, getting started in a restaurant group yeah. that you took to private equity and ultimately yeah. to go public. So how long were you involved in that? And, and you know, how did you see that kind of turn into where you are now? Like there had to be some synergies. And again, I guess, you know, when you came to your childhood friend, you have shown that you've taken a, a group to a higher number. So correct. Yeah. So I, I was eight years there uh, through the process, started out really just prospecting on the sales side. I was, you know, relatively young at that point. Um, and just kind of, it, it basically fell into my lap is really the, the best way to put it. Um, but from that, I, you know, I will say, you know, through grit and work and effort, you know, we made it happen. And really what it came down to more than anything was figuring out where the gaps were and things that weren't getting done and just doing them. Not saying, hey, should I, could I, you know, every once Not in a while, job. sure, right, correct. Never that. Every once in a while, sure, you've got to get an approval or ask, hey, do you mind if I send these emails out? Or, yeah. you know, but as a very simple example, I was starting, I started out just doing prospecting. So we'd get leads, they'd say, hey, call, set an appointment, set the meeting for us to, to try to sell them the franchise, right? And so um, I make the calls, if I get the answer and I set the meeting, great. If not, that lead goes nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. And sure, I could then call the next week and follow up, but not everyone works best by phone. Um, and, and texting was a thing, but not as prevalent at that point. So we would try to text and follow up that way, but definitely wasn't as prevalent. At that point, email was more prevalent. So I knew from having gotten my real estate license, uh, I, I took the real estate exam right after I graduated and took the class my senior year of high school. Um, and through real estate, I learned the marketing side of things, which is very similar to buying a franchise because a franchise and a restaurant, it's an investment, no different than real estate. It's mm -hmm. a big, you know, uh, piece of what that person has built and earned that they're now going to reinvest into something no different than they do at home. So the sales process becomes relatively similar. So I knew we needed to have some drip campaigns and some marketing in place and, and not just hope that someone answers the phone when I call them this random time, whether it's at night, during the day, and, and are they available? If they're running a business- Unscheduled. Or that's it. Most people that are going to invest in a franchise, they have a career or they have another business. They're busy. I mean, they, they've obviously built enough. The right people have built enough of a net worth to go reinvest. So they're doing something, right? They're not just sitting around waiting for me to call them. So um, at the end of the day, I, that, that was really one of the first projects that I took on. And then it just evolved from there. And people, you know, through the effort that I put out and putting the time in when never asked, I was then asked, hey, can you come on board? Can you help us with this? Can you do this? And then, of course, through that, Obviously, we had conversations, and my role grew and grew. Um, and within about a year and a half, I ended up taking over, overseeing all of the franchise development and real estate development. Um, and then, if, you know, uh, about a year from there, oversaw some of the marketing, as other aspects of the business. Uh, and then it just kind of, you know, evolved from there. The role. Um, and then, to your point, we ended up selling uh, to private equity. Um, and eventually, with that group, they then had a few other restaurants. That's when we bought the point of sale company. And so I was involved in that piece of the business. Uh, a little bit and you know it just kind of continued to evolve and evolve and then the private equity group um, you know with them we kind of took the business public and um, and then at that point is when I ended up uh, exiting and, and it's when Cliff and I began having conversations mm -hmm. saying hey you know what should we do what can we do and the credit card business is similar to a franchise without obviously being a franchise there's no you know uh, franchise agreement or you know they're buying the rights to anything right um, but you know, maybe more similar to insurance, but you're, you're helping a person build a business, build a portfolio. So mm -hmm. you're giving them the marketing tools, you're giving them the guidance on the technology and the solutions that we support and how to position it, how to sell it. So there was a lot of synergy with that experience of, you know, getting someone that wants to invest in a franchise, buy a business and build that. 
and someone that wants to maybe shift their career and from maybe selling insurance or selling IT services or you know, maybe it's an add-on or maybe they want to make a full shift to this new career of merchant mm -hmm. services. Uh, either way, it's very similar conversations of how to approach it and what that looks like. So that's how the scalability has been going on. Correct. And now what's the, what's the, what's the plan for uh, green payments? Like, where do you see the next couple of years? For sure. So from here, we're on track this year to pretty much double our current you know, new counts and, and deal flow. Um, hopefully, as you know, uh, different than what you're thinking, hopefully we will be able to kind of keep the team that we have and, and continue to drive them, you know, each person forward and, and let them kind of individually continue to grow in their mm -hmm. roles. Um, but really, you know, at this point, you know, we're a $2 billion company and we're continuing to just, you know, grow, grow each year. Um, and that's really where we're at. I mean, a lot of where our focus at this point um, is kind of that mid-market, you know, look, you're doing 50,000 to 500,000 a month in processing for that individual account. You may have, you know, multi-location, you may be doing, you know, a million to, to five million a month as well. But either way, that's kind of where we're focused is finding, you know, businesses that need real solutions and helping them solve those problems. Like that dental group that I mentioned mm -hmm. before, you know, figuring out where are your pain points, how can we fix them, how can we help? Um, and then really our main focus this coming year is on our partner program and our agents and, and helping them to continue to grow and build their portfolios. And, you know, our business has shifted a lot like you mentioned earlier where it used to just be a standalone terminal is a very easy sell you know what are you paying how can I help you I'm local I'm I'm next door you know me personally work with me instead of who you're working with that sells very easy when you're talking an integrated point of sale and inventory and menus and you know uh, you know scanners and bar uh, you know and scales and everything else that goes into a retail operation specifically but even a, a wholesaler or a big b2b environment yeah. where they're doing invoicing and and they may have uh, you know some some you know, it's a manufacturing plant that has product that they have mm -hmm. to sell. Like every business has its intricacies and that's where we come in and, and help. So our focus really this coming year is continuing to, you know, really work with our partners and our agents to help them uh, continue to grow in their, their And that role. sounds great. And I think that, you know, you guys do a great job of customer service, which if you've heard the podcast before, I, it's a thing that I think is very important. I think that has failed by a lot of businesses these days. Um, just it's not it's not a focus. So. Agreed. Yeah, our big thing. Look, the way whether it was the restaurant group or even you know green payments, my focus in running the company as the the, the chief operating officer is I will do anything. I mean, whether it be look, we have an install and and there you know I'll get under the desk and and help plug in the terminal, see why it's yeah. not working, figure it out, get on the phone with a partner, help them sell the deal, help them close the deal, like. I'm not afraid to do anything myself, and that's how everyone within the company approaches it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think many companies will get to a point of a, a level of scale where, look, especially in our business, things are moving. Look, it's residual revenue, right? Because as long as a business is processing, we have that that uh, income and, and, and volume that's coming through. So once they're there, you get to a certain level of scale, you can get to a point pretty easily where it's like, hey, the, the wheel's in motion, it's rolling. Whether I get involved or not, hey, it's gonna keep rolling, gonna happen, right? Yeah. And so, you know, we have, we stay very conscious, uh, Cliff, who's my partner and I, and, and having those conversations with our team and even with ourselves, where we're not gonna let that happen, right? The bottom line is, the support and level of service matters, and that bar none is what is is what's most important. That's Because awesome. with that, the solutions, the technology, all that's going to evolve constantly. What point of sale someone wants today may be different than what they want tomorrow. But what they will always want is to know if they make a phone call, they're going to get a person that's going to take care of them and check and see what they need and make sure whatever that need is, it's resolved. That's and perfect. so that's yeah. I think the key is you know. Um, for my end personally, it's it's showing the team and, and being an example, not just expecting, well, you do it because I say so, do it because that's how we all are and how we all would want to be treated ourselves. Perfect. All right, cool. I mean, I love it. I love that, that mentality. And it seems like you've been an entrepreneur since the day you were born. Yeah. It's true. I mean, look, my parents will always joke. My, my first business was selling gum and candy in middle school yep. until my quote business partner got in trouble for it because he got caught. It wasn't as slick, I guess, as, as I was at that time, you know, because you couldn't technically sell candy and gum in, in middle school. Um, but eventually, my first real business uh, was a fundraising business that we, we launched in high school. Uh, but the way that it came about was uh, I was raising money for the, uh, the MS walk. Mm -hmm. And in Freehold High School at the time, we had the largest uh, group that did the walk for the, the Freehold walk. And we needed to raise money. And so we started out with doing a bakery sale 
but at the schools had shut down bakery sales because you couldn't have home baked food at that mm -hmm. time. Um, so I ended up bringing in a wholesaler to give us prepackaged baked goods, and we sold that. Wow. And then from there, the guy that provided the product, he called and said, Oh, would you want to do a cheesecake fundraiser? You know, I can bring in cheesecakes, you can go sell them. Sure. So we did the first one. And then he came to me and he was at that, I mean, at that time I was, a, I think a sophomore in high school, maybe junior. And uh, he was uh, an older gentleman. He'd been, you know, had a cake route and, and had kids my age, if not kids older than me at that point. Um, but he then called me a year later. He was like, hey, you want to do it again? I said, yeah, of course we're going to do yeah. it again. It went really well. He said, okay, you seem to know a lot of people. You'll talk to anyone. You know, is there other schools that you can get me into? If you do, I'll split it with you. I'm like, sure. So then, of course, I start calling all these kids that I knew from other schools. And, you know, if, if you're from Monmouth County, you'll know the Freehold Regional High School District is very spread out. So I grew up in one town, but I went to a high school in a different town. I had a twin sister, still do have a twin sister, who went to a different high school. So we had friends kind of all over. So because of that, it was a pretty easy sell into these different schools. And so it just kind of grew from the there. Bottom. Correct. And, uh, and then on later, you know, a few years later, we brought in another uh, partner, and he's still running that business to this day. That's awesome. Um, and it was fun. But yeah, but yeah look business and you can you can through the work and effort you can get to any result if you lay out the plan and understand it and learn and read and talk to enough people it's it's just the effort that really mm -hmm. as I, is to me the the piece that that matters and if you put that effort out it works so is your sister in business she uh she's uh, she works for a uh, ad agency so okay. she does marketing and uh, outside things yeah right. so. but she has that yeah, and then I have another sister who's a who's a you know in the medical you know she's a, a in the medical world so works for Chop. The, oh, the, wow! Yeah, yeah, so. Doing good things. Yes, yes. Perfect. Yeah, no. Look, fortunately, thank God, you know, got all healthy and everyone everyone has kind of found their own path and their found own success in. in a really positive way. That's you know, awesome. So, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, this was a great uh, podcast. I'm glad to have caught up with you, learned more about you, yeah. and 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 I I love the vision you have of you know, excellence and learning and continuing to do better, you know, yeah. and uh, awesome. So let everybody know how, where they can find you online, on your social medias and stuff like that. For sure. Greenpayments.io. So that's www.green, <clears throat> like the color, payments with an S, dot I-O, indigo olive. Um, and, you know, you can uh, also call into our office anytime, 800-567-4729. Uh, also on Instagram, Facebook. Um, LinkedIn. Also, if you, you search Green Payments, we'll be right there. Well, thank you again, and uh, I, can, I wish you continued success, and I look forward to uh, hearing more about the great things you guys are doing. No doubt. Thanks thank you, Tom, for having today. us. No yeah. doubt. Thank you so much.